So in this video, we're going to talk about how to recognize the individual amino acid residues in a polypeptide or a protein chain. And so if you remember, the main components of any individual amino acid are the amine group, the alpha carbon, and the carbonyl. So every amino acid has the amine, alpha carbon, carbonyl, and then the R group represents the side chains, and there are 20 different side chains that can be sticking off that. But this part right here is the backbone. And so you can recognize this because anytime these amino acids link together by dehydration reaction, you end up with the peptide bond linking this amino acid, in this case, to this amino acid. And so again, you can see the mean alpha carbon carbonyl group, that's one amino acid. The peptide bond links that, links that amino acid to the next one. And then again, we have a mean alpha carbon carbonyl. So when you're looking even in a complex polypeptide chain, you can find the amino acids by searching for that amine alpha carbon carbonyl, then you find the peptide bond, the next amine alpha carbon carbonyl. In any polypeptide chain, or often referred to as a protein once they're folded, in any polypeptide chain you're going to have the N-terminus and the C-terminus. And so the N-terminus is the end of the polypeptide chain that has the amine group, and the C-terminus is the end of the polypeptide chain that has the carboxyl terminus. And you can have any of a number, up to hundreds of amino acids linked in between. So let's look at this uh, polypeptide chain down here at the bottom, and this is one of the more complex ones you're ever going to see. And let's try to find the amine terminus first. So if we look at the two ends, so we have kind of ends over here, ends over here. If we start focusing here on the right, we can see that our ends do not have an NH2. So this would not be the N-terminus over here. Thus, the N-terminus must be over here. And this is a little bit complicated because we have three potential spots where we have amine groups. And so what we need to look for is where we have the amine group linked to an alpha carbon linked to a carbonyl, because that's our polypeptide backbone. So if we looked at this amine group, we have an amine group linked to a carbon. Remember, any branch here is short for a carbon in between. So anywhere you have this bend, you have a carbon. So this amine group links to a carbon, but then it does not link to a carbonyl group, and same for this one. So these cannot be the N-terminus because they don't have the amino acid backbone. So if we look here, this is the N-terminus, this would be the alpha carbon, and this is the carbonyl. So right here, we have our the start of our backbone. We have the amine terminus, alpha carbon, and carbonyl. And so what that means is that this right here, all of this is the side chain coming off of that R group. So this right here is our one amino acid. And this, if we look at this carbonyl, this carbonyl here, is indeed bound to another amine group. That tells us we are getting to our next amino acid, and that this right here would be our peptide bond. That's our peptide bond. So now it becomes a little bit easier because we already have our first amino acid. This would be the N-terminus. We have the amine, alpha carbon, carbonyl. Then there's the amine. Is this the alpha carbon? No, because the next one's not the carbonyl. So this would be the alpha carbon because there we have the carbonyl group. And so this is our next amino acid. And therefore, this right here is our peptide bond. And then we have amine, alpha carbon, and this would be the carbonyl, making this our peptide bond. Hook to the next amine, alpha carbon carbonyl. There's our peptide bond right there. Amine, alpha carbon. And again, we can take a look. Is this where the backbone goes? No, because this would have to be a carbonyl. So there's our amine, alpha carbon carbonyl. So we know it goes in this direction, thus making this right here again our peptide bond. And we have amine, alpha carbon carbonyl moving on to the right. There's a peptide bond between the carbonyl and the next amine, alpha carbon carbonyl. There's another peptide bond. Amine, alpha carbon carbonyl, peptide bond. Amine, alpha carbon carbonyl. There's a peptide bond. And then we have an amine, alpha carbon carbonyl. There's another peptide bond. And we know that this right here, amine, alpha carbon carbonyl, this is our C terminus because this is the last amino acid and we have the carboxyl end this would be our side chain of this last amino acid. All right, so at this point, we have identified our amino acids, individual residues. We've identified the N-terminus of the protein, and we've identified the C-terminus of the protein. 
Now we can look for those side chains. Remember the side chains are always coming off of the alpha carbon. So if we take a look at these again, so we already found the first side chain off of our first alpha carbon. Now we have a mean alpha carbon. So that means this right here is the side chain of protein number two. Here's our alpha carbon for this uh, amino acid, sorry. And so there's the side chain. There's the side chain for the next one. Alpha carbon for that amino acid, so there's the side chain. There would be the side chain for this amino acid residue, the side chain for this amino acid residue, the side chain for this amino acid residue. This one right here actually doesn't have a side chain coming off of it. That's the unique uh, amino acid with glycine where the side chain is just simply a hydrogen, but that still would be the side chain coming off of that amino acid residue. Here's the side chain off that amino acid residue, and our C-terminus amino acid has that particular side chain. So if you look on your textbook on page 46, you can actually start to identify each of these amino acid side chains. This one right here is arginine. This one right here is a proline. This one right here would be a lysine, another proline. Then we have a glutamic acid. Then we have, um, let's see, this one looks like a glutamine to me. Then we have a phenylalanine, another phenylalanine. I've talked about glycine already. Then we have a leucine right here. And then we have a methionine. Now, you don't need to recognize each individual amino acid by name, but what you do need to be able to do is recognize them as polar, nonpolar, acidic, or basic. And so if we take a look at this one here, we see that this has a positive charge here at the end of it. That means that's basic. A basic amino acids have already accepted an extra proton and gained its positive charge. And remember, bases are proton acceptors. This basic amino acid accepted a proton, and now it has that positive charge. This right here just has carbons, and remember, biologists tend to not draw the hydrogens coming off of it. This would be a hydrocarbon. That makes this nonpolar because there are no polar bonds within that side chain. This right here has a positive charge at the end of it again, another basic amino acid. Another nonpolar, just hydrocarbon. This one right here has a negative charge at the end, so that makes it acidic. Remember, an acid is a proton donor. This already donated that hydrogen proton, leaving it with its negative charge. That's an acidic amino acid. And then right here we have a polar amino acid side chain because we've got a carbon double bond oxygen, a very polar bond. And then we have carbon nitrogen and nitrogen hydrogens. Those are polar bonds as well. This phenylalanine is a nonpolar amino acid side chain because it's all carbons and hydrogens, all nonpolar bonds. Same thing here, same thing here, different amino acid, but again, just hydrocarbon, so it's a nonpolar amino acid. And then finally, this one right here with methionine with the sulfur in between, that also is a nonpolar amino acid.